Disclaimer. Please check your playback settings. Ensure you are listening to this podcast at normal speed. Unless you want us to sound drunk. Then play at half speed. Thank you. So why are we doing this again? Shh. We need a superhero for the show. We only have a few weeks left. So here we are. Yeah, right. But um, mummies aren't superheroes. Says you. Mummies are more villains than anything. This plan is stupid. Shh. You know, where the hell is Dan? You know, I don't know. But if he's smart, he's not trying to break into this museum. <sighs> you know, he's just constantly late anymore. I mean, just seriously. Okay. In his defense, though, this plan is dumb. Besides, aren't mummies in Egypt or in Ohio? Pandemic, Josh. Travel is difficult. Luckily, this museum has a mummy exhibit. All we do is show the mummy this amulet and it'll do our bidding. Except for the fact that this is a mummy movie exhibit. There's not even any real mummies here. This plan is done. Guys, 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 I'm here, I'm here. Jesus, shh, God, don't do that. Where the hell have you been this whole time? Yeah, I'm honestly surprised you didn't have a thing. Yeah, sorry, uh, the chief was really on my case about getting a guest for the podcast. And besides, I, I figured you guys would need a lookout. You said that the last time, you know what? Never mind, you're just in time. For what? Getting the mummy as the guest star for the show. But mummies aren't superheroes. That's what I said. I mean, they're more of a villain, if anything. That's what I said too. This plan is dumb. Word for word. Shh, shh, shh. Quiet, 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 quiet. You hear that? Holy shit. Is this really happening? This is it. This is it. Okay, all I have to do is show him the same. Like, repeat his phrase twice. Joder Miano. Joder Miano. Did it work? Did you say it right? I don't know. Okay, here, here we go. I'll get on one side. Josh, you go over there and you wait for my signal. You can capture it and then unleash it in the park or something. Okay, that's dark, but whatever. Oh, to attract a superhero. Yeah, that, that's what I meant. <laughs> guys, 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 here it comes, here it comes. The mummy returns. <laughs> what was that? Is he sleeping? It's a homeless guy. <laughs> it's a drunk homeless guy. Mister, you okay? <laughs> what are you doing here? Looking for a mummy? Huh? Why? To guest star as a superhero on our podcast? But mummies aren't superheroes. Mm-hmm. They're more of a villain, if anything. Mm-hmm. This plan is dumb. Mm-hmm. <sighs> yeah, let's watch a movie, guys. We're taking Jimmy Stewart to the shootest. John Wayne to True Grit. Robert Duvall to Days of Thunder. Tom Cruise to The Mummy. Russell Crowe to The Quick and the Dead. Gene Hackman to Superman. Fly into the hero's journey with Tom, Dan, and Josh and race faster than a speeding bullet towards the superhero films of superhero films, Superman! You will believe that a fire pit can fly! Good evening, bots and listeners. Welcome back to another exciting episode of the Fire Pit. I'm Dan, hero name enforcer, and man, was last week a lot of fun. Felt good to just sit back and enjoy a film after weeks and weeks of really heavy stuff. And this week, well, this movie isn't heavy, I'll say that. As per our rules, though, we've taken an actor or actress from our last film and moved them onto this one. And now to tell us about what we're watching and who we're watching, I send things over to Josh. Well, thank you, Nigel. Josh here. Hero name, Numbers. And uh, last week, we watched Tom Cruise tear up the racetrack with Robert Duvall in Days of Thunder. 
And this week, we're watching Tom Cruise tear up his last chance to jumpstart the Universal Studios' dark universe in The Mummy, a 2017 remake, reimagining, retelling, whatever the fuck you want to call it, starring, as you know it, Tom Cruise, some other guys like Russell Crowe. But this was the latest and hopefully last attempt the Universal made to try to jumpstart their dark universe to compete with the MCU. I have no idea what that one is, though. But I'm sure we're going to discuss this at length over the next couple of hours. So I'm going to go ahead and give Tom an opportunity to give the rundown of the film we're currently watching. Thompson? Yeah, thank you, Josh. Funny bone here, ladies, gentlemen, bots, and listeners. Secret identity Tom. And yeah, last week we had fun for all the right reasons. And this week... It'll be for all the wrong reasons. And I'll see, are we going to have fun? Uh, I, I, I'm skeptical on this one. So we are watching the 2017 The Mummy, directed by Alex Kurtzman. Oh my God, he directed this? He directed this, yeah. Mm, and you know my opinions about some of the new Star Trek stuff coming out, so not looking forward to that. Written by David Cope, Christopher McCary, Dylan Cussman. John Spates, Jenny Lumet, and of course, Alex Kurtzman. And we all know when there are like five or six writers on a film, it, it's quality, he said with deep sarcasm. It's starring <laughs> Tom Cruise as Nick Morton, Russell Crowe as Henry Jekyll, Sophia Botella as Amanet, Annabelle Wallace as Jenny Halsey, and Jake Nick Miller Johnson as Sergeant Corporal Vale. Uh, he was sergeant in the script, but was called corporal in the movie. Also, I, I'm an unapologetic fan of New Girl, and I love him in that show. He's great as Nick Miller, so that's just me right there. But this movie premiered at the State Theater in Sydney, Australia on May 22nd, 2017, and was released theatrically in the United States June 9th, 2017, the same year, at a budget of 125 million dollars estimated uh it's opening weekend in the u.s it grossed a little over 31 million premiered at number two at the box office actually surprisingly enough slow box office weekend it grossed over 80 million in the united states and had a cumulative worldwide gross of 409 million which sounds impressive but according to wikipedia due to the combined production and marketing costs of 345 million it was estimated the film needed to gross 450 million in order to break even and so it wound up losing about 60 to 100 million Oof. yeah Oof. i didn't realize yes. it lost that much you look at that initial number of 409 million worldwide gross you're like why is this movie considered a flop oh oh mm -hmm. oh it's like josh has always said like, you look at the box office, or not box office, but the budget, you always take that and, like, what, divide by four or something like, Josh? What do you always say about that? Uh, from my understanding, and again, I'm no Hollywood accountant, but uh, from my understanding is you take the budget and you multiply that by two. Because they say that typically the, uh, and that's the actual budget to include advertising. They usually say they spend as much in advertising as they do on the movie. Sometimes they spend more on advertising than they actually do on the movie. So this cost $125 million to make and $345 million advertising budget. Jesus God. Yeah, that could be, that'd be $250 million total overall budget if you just take it by two. But yeah. yeah, and needless wow. to say... The audiences didn't react fondly. Uh, IMDb has this at 5.4, and a Rotten Tomato score of 16%, with an audience score of 35%. And just for perspective, for those listening and for us here, The Shooters has a 7.6 on IMDb and an 86% on Rotten Tomatoes. Huh. And we, we know how we feel about that film. <laughs> Putting it in perspective. So... You did mention, in your, or you, I see in your notes here, you said this was designed to be the first part in Universal's Dark Universe. It was actually the third try. Actually, no, it might be the fourth try they had to get this Dark Universe off the ground. Their first attempt, if I'm not mistaken, was that really bad, stupid I, Frankenstein movie. Um, oh, I don't think that was. I don't even No, know. the Wolfman. The yeah, Benicio the Del Toro one, Wolfman was the first attempt. Yeah, that was a, that was a terrible reboot. A boring that was, film. That, that was a hopeful Iron Man-esque start. 
Because I think if that was successful, they were going to go on to it, but it didn't have any Dark Universe stuff in that one. It was Dracula Untold. They filmed the movie, and then they went back for reshoots. The reshoots basically added in the stuff to add it into the Dark Universe. I think if Wolfman was successful, they would have used that one, but it kind of bombed in the same way that Green Lantern was supposed to originally be the uh, yeah. springboard for the DC Extended Universe. But it bombed so hard, they're like, yeah, let's wait till Superman. I think they were <laughs> like, yeah, let's wait till Dracula. And then Dracula technically kicked it off, but then that bombed pretty hard. So they're like, well, let's try it again with uh, The Mummy. Because yeah. The Mummy's a bigger IP. Yeah, it's it's yeah. got and, and Tom uh, Cruise. And and I, I don't even remember the Dracula one. Yeah, I with Dracula. 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 I actually didn't think it was that bad of a film. It's just not memorable. Like, uh, it's Jello. <laughs> it really is jello. Like, it's not bad while you're eating it, but after you're done eating it, you're like, did I even eat? And after I got done watching Dracula Untold, like, ten minutes later, I'm like, what were I doing for the last two hours? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, yeah that's like, I, that reminds me of the movie, and I only say this because I've just thought about this movie recently, but the movie Surrogates, the 2009 Bruce Willis movie Surrogates, it's like, that movie is jello. So it's like... Yeah. I feel like Dracula Untold was in the same vein as that. Yeah, it's not bad. It's just completely forgettable. And it's, well, then maybe it is bad. I mean, if you don't remember anything about it and it's it, it's not anything part, that you're in a hurry to go back and watch, then maybe, yeah, the movie is a kind of a failure. It wasn't a very successful box office. and I haven't seen it. Have you seen it, Dan? What, Dracula Untold? Yeah. Yeah, I've seen Dracula Untold. And I didn't hate it while I was watching it, but I don't remember much about it. So, again, it's forgettable. And... I can see why, like, they tried again with this movie, but, and I'll get into it when we do our expectations here in a minute, but there's serious flaws with trying to build this dark universe thing. Like, this just not, oh, stop, yeah. stop it. Well, well, they got it right the first time with Monster Squad. <laughs> <laughs> but now, real quick, before we get on to our expectations, I wanted to do a quick rundown on the Mummy 2017 reboot's opening uh, weekend. So it had some competition that weekend. <laughs> so number five that weekend was Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. Number four was Pirates of the Caribbean, Dead Men Tell No Tales. I, I, I didn't understand the, even that movie. That was what the fifth one, because people don't really remember the fourth one. Number three was Captain Underpants, the first epic movie, which was actually really good. Me and my son love watching that. And then at number two was The Mummy, pulling in $31 million, which was beat out by... At its second week, grossing almost $60 million, Wonder Woman, which could be argued as being one of the best movies in the DC Extended Universe. But, but yeah, that wasn't a very big weekend, considering the number one movie in June, early June, brought in $60 million. And it was on its second week. Yeah. Let's just put it into context. When Superman Returns came out, had the first weekend, second weekend, Pirates just beat the shit out of it. Superman yeah. Returns. Oh, yeah. yeah, Superman. Yeah, that's right. Because they moved it up a week. I remember that. They moved it up a week. And I remember being excited about that. And I was like, why? It's competing with the second Pirates of the Caribbean movie, Dead Man's Chest, ironically enough. Mm -hmm. And, dude, it got stomped hard. Yes, it yeah, did. Yeah, it did. We were there, dude. It broke my heart. But I will say this. Did Wonder Woman win awards? Because the mummy did. <laughs> Do you want to know what awards it won? I'm afraid to ask. Oh, it got nominated for many, many awards in the 2018 Golden Raspberry Awards. Oh, okay. <laughs> it got nominated for Worst Picture, Worst Director, Worst Supporting Actor with Russell Crowe. Uh, Alex Kurtzman was uh, nominated for Worst Director. Uh, worst Supporting Actress with Sofia Botella. Worst screenplay by all those five or 16 people. Worst prequel, remake, ripoff, or sequel. Wow, that's a broad category. That has to have a lot. And it won for worst actor to Tom Cruise, award-winning actor. Woo! That's also amazing. Because honestly, I would have to say that Tom Cruise is probably what it's been. How, when did this movie come out? 2017. So it's been three years since I've seen it, but I remember Tom Cruise being one of the stronger points of this film. Yeah, it's it's been a while since I've seen it too, but he's the only part of this movie that makes it even kind of watchable. Because I don't think Tom Cruise is a bad actor, and I think giving him an award to saying he was the worst part of this movie is 
a little harsh, considering, honestly, Russell Crowe, who is an Academy Award winning actor, I might add, literally phones in a performance as oh Mr. God. Like, ugh, it's just so bad. He's just like sleepwalking through the whole thing. And, ugh. Yeah. You know, Dan, why don't you just go ahead and start off giving your expectations for this film? <laughs> yeah, tell us how you really uh, feel. Uh, we, uh, we might as well at least officially segue into the segment okay. before bleeding into it. Dan, what are your expectations? <clears throat> well, I mean, I've seen this movie, and I didn't care for it. I mean, it's, like I said, it's watchable, but it's not anything I'm in a hurry to go see again. And I'm only watching it because we're doing it for this podcast. I thought it would be a fun episode to do. But my expectations are bottom of the barrel this movie is just not that good and it, it's this dark universe experiment that universal just had a hard on for for like five or six years just to try to catch up with marvel and you're like what nobody wants this all the other connected universes most of them make sense of course the marvel movies make sense it's a comic book franchise the dc movies all make sense they're not good movies but wanting dc wanting their own connected universe to compete with marvel makes sense dc is a competing comic book brand Marvel's a comic book brand. Those movies make sense. They're doing this Godzilla kaiju universe. That makes sense. The early 50s and 60s were all the Godzilla versus whoever. They're bringing those back. Again, that connected universe makes sense. I don't think I've ever once thought, what if Dracula fought Frankenstein? Like, I don't care. I don't well, care. Again, we know what happens because of Monster Squad. Yeah, like, I mean, I mean, what's, what's going to happen is, like, the, the villagers going to surround... Frankenstein in the farmhouse or whatever, and then all of a sudden you're just going to hear, you know, Benicio del Toro say, "On your left," and then the Wolf Man's going to appear, and and the bats show up, and they turn into Dracula, and and like, who fucking cares? This is a thing that doesn't need to be a thing, and yet Universal was so bent on making this happen, and this movie's the biggest tragedy of all of them because I said Dracula Untold's not bad, but it's not memorable. I Frankenstein's a bad film, but it's so bad that it becomes oh good goodness. again. I don't even think that was a part of it. No, but I think they were they were trying to shoehorn it in, or they were going to try to shoehorn it in. I don't even remember that movie. Hey, that was the one with um, Aaron Harvey Eckhart. Guy. Yeah, Aaron, Aaron Eckhart plays Frankenstein. It's a bad movie. But, like, all these movies have been just failures of, like, trying to get these dark universe movies off the bat. But this one's the worst one, because this one is The Amazing Spider-Man 2, but without the comfort of saying, well, at least I'm watching a Spider-Man movie. Because it's constantly showing the audience something that they'll get to later. Like, look at this. We'll get to it later. Look at this. This is another movie. Look at this. We'll get to this in another movie. They spent so much time in this movie setting up the universe, they forgot to set up the movie. And it falls flat on its face because of it. And it's kind of frustrating to watch because it's like Iron Man 1 is almost the perfect kickoff movie for the connected universe. Because even if that hadn't been successful, at least Iron Man 1 had its own self-contained story. It had a beginning, a middle, and an end. Yes, it had the adventure will continue kind of ending, implying that there's going to be sequels. But if it hadn't been the biggest success as it was, they never made a sequel to Iron Man. At least you had some closure on that story. This one does not. This one is definitely setting up to be the first in a big franchise. And yet it, uh, it doesn't do anything because they didn't make the franchise. So the movie's empty and hollow and just shallow as hell. But that's me. And I'm going to rant about this movie for the next two hours. So let's go ahead and get to Josh's expectations for it. Well, thank you there, uh, Nigel. But uh, I'd have to say my expectations on this film is incredibly low as well. I have seen this, but uh, I remember being incredibly bored with it. I know I mentioned last week that this movie kind of tricks you into thinking it's a good movie because it starts off interesting. I remember being interested the first, you know, third or so. But then it's like your interest, it's like a rising uh, graph. It's like constantly going up. Like, oh, this is cool. This is cool. And then it just drops and just flat lines it's like you think it's doing good and then suddenly just it stops being good i don't know how to explain it i don't know if there is even a word for it but it just stopped being good um i thought that it would be interesting to see a dark universe but i oh god the ending i just remember the ending the ending is terrible <laughs> don't spoil me dude i'm i'm going in completely blind yeah, I even... but i just i just remembered the ending and i'm just like oh god that was the dumbest thing ever I really hope Tom Cruise didn't sign on for too many more movies for this. This may be one of those Brandon Routh situations where uh, he signed on for like three Superman movies, but he got none of them. So Tom Cruise is probably like late in the day. He's like, okay, I signed on a four-year contract. I got one more year to go. I mean, obviously, he fucked off back to the Mission Impossible franchise, so that tells you where Tom Cruise is. He's, I think he's okay. Oh, with but it, he right? loves the uh, 
Mission Impossible movies. I don't know. I, I, I'm not expecting a lot out of this viewing. I've pretty much <laughs> forgotten most of it, with the exception of what I just remembered. It's like I barely remember this movie existed until you showed your list, Dan. So, yeah, I'm at the bottom. My expectations are bottomed out. I have no expectations for this. But I am looking forward to making fun of this film over the next couple of hours. So, I thought you were going to say harassing Tom by making him watch this film. Oh, yes, that too. Yeah, what he said. But, uh, Tom, what, what, what are your thoughts or your expectations, I should say? We've seen this sort of story before where they take characters that are monsters, adventurers, whatever, and try to force them into a superhero mode. We were there for League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. <laughs> we were there for that travesty. So I'm expecting that. I'm glad that Tom Cruise is in this, because we've established that Tom Cruise always gives a Tom Cruise performance. So I've got that looking forward to. Nothing else about this. I would usually do a thing about writers, directors, but... Fucking Kurtzman. Remember there was a point in our lives where we actually looked forward to movies written by him? Yeah. It was very brief, but there was a point. Yeah. Then we grew up. We we knew better. It's like the kids that, you know, tired of living with the parents, so they go live with the other dad or the other mom, and they realize, no, we had it so much better with the real parents. I'll at least say this much. With the Razzies... One of the awards it did get nominated for, which I think is a positive, the Razzie nominee, So Rotten That You Loved It. It didn't win, but it got nominated. So there's a chance. Slim. About this slim. Josh can see how how tight I'm squeezing my fingers together. His fingers are literally touching. Thank you, Josh. That it could be fun. Like Aquaman fun. I, I Yeah. I can see that. Nothing but terrible from Aquaman. It was terrible. Let it not be misunderstood, but it was entertaining at the very least. So I'm hoping that this doesn't hurt. I'm, but I don't know. This movie does. It, it starts off kind of strong. Like the opening's pretty funny and interesting, and the initial setup isn't too bad. It's just like I said earlier this or a couple weeks ago. This movie really goes off the rails once the plot kicks in. Like I said, they just forgot to set up the movie. They, they spent so long setting up their universe. And it seems like it might be it might have been an interesting universe had they gone through with it. But, again, nobody asked for it. Like, nobody wants this. And it's Geely with monsters. Like, I mean, <laughs> I, I'm a big... I've been a movie fan, a comic book fan, a pop culture geek fan all my life. And, you know, I, you know I, when the Avengers finally came together, like, I remember th- sitting in the theater going, I've waited 31 years for this moment. Dracula in, in Frankenstein sharing the same screen. I love Dracula movies and I love Frankenstein movies. I've never been like, they need to be in the same movie. Like, mm-hmm. they, oh my God, what if they had a Dracula and Frankenstein movie? No. no. Yeah, it's like somebody in 1952 might have thought that. Oh, they did try that back in the day. There were several Frankenstein meets Wolfman, yeah. um, Abbott or Costello fight Dracula and the Wolfman and... Mothra, I'm sure, is in there, too, somewhere. And, <laughs> yeah, history repeats itself because all of those films bombed, too. But they still keep trying over yeah. and over again. They got it right in the 80s. Yeah, but and as, I, as I said, the other connected universes make some sense. Yeah, like you uh, know. the Monsterverse. That, yeah. Like, I honestly, I, I like that one because all the movies feel like it's... It felt like it came together more organically. Whereas... Like, this one feels forced. It feels like they're like, here, look at this. Look at this. No, you're going to get this reference, by God. And it's, yeah. MCU and MCU was very much like, hey, guys, Avengers, look what they want. That one word he said 35 minutes into the film. <laughs> yeah. He said Avengers. Or, or it's like, you know who that guy is. You know who that guy is. It's like we were the dog, and they were the master holding the ball. Like, here, here, go get that. But they didn't actually throw the ball. That's the way the MCU did it. And yeah. it was very well done. It's like because we went running. By God, we went running. This dark universe that Universal was just hell bent on making, and from all rumors, is there it's not quite dead yet. Like they're still like, we need to maybe try again. And you're like, no, you don't. It, it's not working. I will say this: Josh and I didn't like this movie, and Tom is not going to like this movie. But believe it or not, I found people who like this movie. So I don't believe it. I don't well, believe it. I've decided to kind of sort of go you off. I decided to kind of go back to I the said roots. I, was, I apologize for cutting you off. You know what, Josh? I'm, I'm sorry gonna... for cutting you off. 
Dad's going to come over. He knows we're both in the same yeah. location right now. Yeah, exactly. He's going to come and kick both yeah. of our asses at the same yeah. time. Yeah, both you fuckwits are, are 30 minutes away. Trust me. <laughs> Dom- Domino's Pizza is not going to get to your house faster than me. <laughs> so, anywho, I've said I found people that like this movie, but I want to preface this by saying, Josh, you did a Bill Gates last week and you stole my idea with the whole. Is this a movie from the remake or is this a movie from the original or during your last trivia? So I decided to Steve Jobs your Bill Gates in that I will steal back my idea but make it better and more marketable. Well, technically, maybe not maybe not better. Maybe not better, but I'm going to market it and the millennials will love me. Just do me a favor when you do market it, just market it with like a flat UI and yeah, then, yeah, I'll, and I'll, and then like, I'll steal that from you and sell 10 times as many. Yeah. But everybody will say yours was better. Exactly. Or a movie featuring the words "the mummy" has been made five times at least. Are you counting the sequels to Brendan no. Fraser? No, no, no. The original was in 1932. The remake of that was in 1959. Then the Brendan Fraser movie in 1999, and then this one in 2017. So there are four movies with the mummy. So I accidentally said I said five times it's been remade. It's only been remade four times. So it's there's four different versions of this, and I combed reviews from all four versions. Oh no! So I'm going back to uh, IMDb internet reviews, and I'm going to read a line from the review, and one of you is going to tell me: Is it the 2017, the 1999, the 1959, or the 1932 version? And if you both guess, the tiebreaker is what was the score? Oh shit! <sighs> so. So with Josh being the gracious loser last week, Tom will go first. And he's stealing my jokes. <laughs> <laughs> I steal everything. <laughs> Although I have a feeling that this is just going to be that B-movie parody. But go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> no. No, this is not the direct-to-video <laughs> version. This is the porn version. There's sex in it. All right. All right I'll give you that one. <laughs> All right. Here we go. Tom. Quite possibly one of the poorest movies I've ever seen. And I have seen quite a few in my time. With an all too simple story, it's a weak excuse to throw some special effects around which surprisingly weren't that good. This movie is what gives adventure blockbuster movies a bad name. Now we have to guess which mummy. Yeah, which four. version? Which of the four? 2017, 1999, 1959, or 1932? Oh, that's 1999. That's a Brendan Fraser one. Josh. Is this the thing where I get to get, give mine yeah, to? Or? Yeah, yeah, you, yeah. You both get to guess. Um, part of me wants to say the 99 version, and I'm afraid I'm going to be giving it to Tom because my I think my gut instinct is to go with the 99, but I'm going to go with the 17. <sighs> Always trust your gut. It's the 1999 ah, version. Yeah, yeah. That person was wrong, by the way. Yeah, it's a two-star review. It's like, oh, really? Very wrong. Wow. Like, damn, that's a good fucking movie. <laughs> that's a fun film. Yeah, that's a lot like the movie we watched last week, where it's just a movie where you just have fun watching it. Yeah. Right, but I'm ahead, so I'm not. Yeah, I'm dead. yeah John. We can have more quizzes. <laughs> so, yeah, Tom is ahead. It's only um, my losing streak. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God. Here we go. Josh. Egyptian mummies are fascinating creatures. Yet, I am sure that I am not standing alone with the opinion that their representation in horror cinema is a bit weak compared to other horror creatures. Oh, Jesus Christ. Right. That is just... Um... My gut says the 52 release. Tom? I'm thinking. I'm thinking. It's actually 59, but I'll allow it. Okay. I knew. I I put them 52 on my paper. Tom, what do you say? I'm saying the 2017. Josh, with the point. It's actually the 1959 version. Boom. I've actually seen that. A, um, yeah, that's the one with Christopher Lee. That's the one with Christopher Lee. Oh. Wow. Yeah, he he plays the mummy. Oh, does he? I think he does. I, it's been a while. You know, I'm not going to go check, so I'll believe you. <laughs> no, I just love that a whole bunch of archaeologists find the tomb, get the stuff out, and then blow up the tomb. Because we got what we needed. Makes sense. Yep. 1950s. Oh, paleontologists archaeolo- still? <laughs> yep. In the 50s. All right, so it's one to one. Okay. Tom. Back to you. It's so boring. Okay, let's be fair. It starts off... Okay, there's another line. Okay, let's be fair. It starts off good, but after the first scene, the movie just really starts to drag. A lot. I get it. It drags because it's a mummy. Oh, God. This could go for both the 32 and the 59. I've never seen the 32, but I remember seeing the original Wolfman, and I felt the same way. So I'm going to say 32. Mm. 
It also depends when this review was written, too. But, uh, God, um... That's my knee-jerk reaction, too, is the 32 version. Just based off of... It's so boring, because when you say it's so boring... Yeah, now just remember, you both can guess the same year. The tiebreaker's of the number, or how yeah, many yeah. stars it was, so... Because uh, that's my knee-jerk reaction, is the 32 version. Hmm. I'm gonna go ahead and go with that, 32. You too, Tom? 32? Yeah. yeah. All right, you both are right. It's the 1932 yes. version. So now tell me, how many stars out of 10 did this person give that review? I'm Here assuming, yeah, I'm four. I'm going to go with a three. Tom with the four-star review. Uh, do I get the double point? No, we don't do double points on this one. It's just uh, that's right. I'll take, I'll take the W. Oh, yeah. Two to one. Okay. Boop, boop, boop. Yeah, it's still first to five. It's still first to five. I'm winning. And he's jacking off. Tom. Oh, nice. Both wow. hands. Damn. Oh, no, no it's, it's, it's not that bad. He's jacking me off. I'm the one who's naked. Hands back. <laughs> like, you had to say something. <laughs> okay, Josh. Goodness, this film is as stupid as a bag of hammers. Like, this movie plays more like a video game. A really dull video game with a neat opening, and then it just gets bigger and a lot more retarded. It's a very 2017. dull... <laughs> 2017. I don't even need a try on this one. It's the 2017 version. All right, Tom, what do you think? <laughs> I'm assuming... No, you've done one each, but I think your throng's for a curve. I'm going to say 99. Tom with the right answer. I knew it. It's the 1999 version. Yeah, that was a four-star review. Like, it was surprising how many people were hating on the 99 version. In fact, I actually found one review of the 99 version that said it wasn't as good as this one that we're about to watch. And I'm like, you watched the wrong movie, my friend. You watched the <laughs> wrong one. You got your dates mixed up or something. Boy, hey. Yeah. Well, Tom, technically, it's yours. Yeah. It's three to one. That's my uh, two-week losing streak. Yeah. Do you guys well, want to do another one or? Yeah, yeah go ahead and throw us the last question. Okay. I lost. I got, actually so. got two. I actually have two more. Two more. It, okay. Man, what have we said? I, no, I just said two more because I had to have an, uh, an extra one in case you tied on each and every question. All right. So okay. this yeah. is the last one. Then we're gonna hear what okay. the tiebreaker would have been. Yeah. Okay. okay, I'm okay with that. All right. Too bad Mystery Science Theater 3000 isn't around anymore. They'd have a ball with this stupid movie. I want to say the 59 version, but I think it's a, it's also between the 59 and the 17. I'm going to go 59. Oh, this is definitely th uh, 17. It's the 59 version. Josh would have got that question right. All right, well, I still uh, win. Uh -huh. yeah, it would have been three and, to two. Yep, and the tiebreaker was, I have enjoyed this movie a lot. It's an awesome movie with basic plot and some noteworthy acting. The 99. 99. It's actually a 10-star review from the 2017 version. <laughs> this film got a 10-star. <laughs> People are dumb. <laughs> okay, who who gave that review? I want to know what Kirsten goes by on. I am... <laughs> but that's it. That was That's my trivia for tonight. That's all the questions I had. I, I know it might not have been as what I usually do with the, the trivia of the different actors and all that, but I figured we've talked at length about Tom Cruise over the last couple of weeks, so I figured I'd, I'd do the reviews with the different versions, especially when I found out that there's four different movie versions of The Mummy. So, well, no, there's there technically go. two versions of this film, but we'll talk about more because I think Tom, play the music. <laughs> Welcome back to another dark episode of the Fire Pit. I am, as always, your interspersal host, editor, and reincarnation of the God of Death, Tom! Ugh. No, I could just hit the snooze button before we do this, you know, just rest for another 50,000 years or so. Oh boy, that hit the spot! Mm. And speaking of spots, thank you for choosing us as your landing spot while flying high into the hero's journey. It's been cowboys and cars to this point, but now we get to spend some time with the guy. Sarcophagi, that is. Sorry, my mummy told me that one. <laughs> hey -oh! 
Seems that the team's really wrapped up in their efforts to get that special super guest for the penultimate Superman episode. It looked like they were in a real bind earlier, but what say we tomb in and see whether they've been able to unearth anything new? Fantastic work on the costume, Dan! Thank you very much. I think it's my best stuff. What work? This is my super villain outfit. All you did was just add some cloth wrappings around it and some other... What is this? Other modifications. Well, we could have gone with something more professional, but somebody had to go and max out my credit card by blowing up a race car. <laughs> yeah, that was a good day. Uh, I still don't see how this could possibly work. Simplicity. See, we've been making things more complicated than they should be. So here, you just run around for a while and pretend to stop some crimes. I'll take some pictures of the, quote, new hero in town. And we wait for it to go viral. And then we have you come on the show. Simple. The chief will never know. I know the plan. But why do I smell like lighter fluid? Oh, that's the kerosene. I'm out. No, Josh, 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 buddy, buddy. We can't just have you run around in a costume. You have to look like you have powers. By being on fire? It's only a little fire. Plus I added some fireproofing to your costume. You'll be fine, totally. You just need to run around for a few minutes so we can just get some good pictures. It's totally safe. <sighs> Let's just make this quick, but just know I do this under protest. All right. Dan, you get the camera ready? I'll get the lighter. Ready? Ready. Huh? Awesome. Oh, whoa. Why is the room spinning? Hang on, buddy. I've almost got it. Hey, we got a reply. What? Oh, what's going on? Yeah, one of the Craigslist ads we sent out a while back. Somebody replied. Where am I? Uh, it goes by the name of, uh, Professor Metzger? I guess he's a German hero. Um, he says he wants to talk about being on the show! Well, that's great! Sounds like we have a guest! Josh, I think we'll need you to... Oh, oh that, that Josh. Josh. I think he's actually hurt. Poke, poke, poke. <sighs> Help me carry him to the hospital. Again. Mummies aren't superheroes. Way to dig in, fellas. Don't get too buried in praise, though. Otherwise, you might wind up cursing yourselves. Mummy jokes! Ha! Yes, I'm corpse in it right now, people. But if you want to heap some praise, or curses, upon us over here, or if you just want to bring people into your own pyramid schemes, feel free to shamble on over to our email at curtaincallentertainmentinc at gmail.com. That's curtaincallentertainmentinc at gmail.com. Just be sure to put fire pit in the subject line, as well as whether you're emailing uh, for an ad, a comment, a destination recommendation, uh, movie recommendations, or if you just want to give a shout out to your own personal set and let us know what you have. And from there, we will chisel it into the ancient hieroglyphs upon the pyramid walls and seal it in traps and bury everything under miles upon miles of sand for thousands of years and never respond. Such is the way of the gods. But that email again is curtaincallentertainmentinc at gmail.com capital C, capital C, capital E, capital I at gmail.com Ugh. Sounds like the archaeologists are back at it again. <sighs> I'll let you all get back to the show. I'm going to give them a pharaoh bit of my mind. Ha! <laughs> You'll get it. But thank you all for listening, and as always, good luck! And 
now to check on the team to see how they're enjoying their movie. We're 57 seconds in and I already missed Brendan Fraser. Ooh, butt cheeks. All right, every time that it does something stupid, take a drink. I don't think we have enough beer, Josh. No, we don't. And I have a six pack. Who's that girl? It's There's Nick! Our connector! Oh, I was focusing on Nick. That's Nick Miller. Best part of New Girl. Jenny, Jenny, who can I turn to? Tom Cruise is how old? Tom Cruise is 58 years old as of today. He looks 32! He looks <laughs> younger than me! There's literally a, a painting of Tom Cruise somewhere hidden in the basement of a warehouse of him aging. Yeah. It's right next to the one with uh, Robert Duvall. Maybe there is something to this Scientology thing. <laughs> Why does any time a statue is made of somebody who died just looks like they were just dumb? Tom, oh. edit that out. Who's that guy? Who's that actor? He looks so familiar. I got it. He's been in so many films. That is Courtney B. Vance. And yes, you're right, Tom. He has been in a lot of things. Oh, you know what? We've seen him on our podcast. No shit. He was the sonar technician on the Dallas in the Hunt for Red October. Oh, no shit. Oh, my God. We have another connector. Yeah. You have another two peeps. Boobies. Do I take this hit? Come on. That's a nasty looking bong. <laughs> Damn. Yeah. How did they miss that? He's had a few guys before him. <laughs> like throwing a hot dog down a hallway. <laughs> They're spelunking in. <laughs> Tom, edit that out. No, leave it in. <laughs> and my makeup is perfectly done regardless of the fact that I have just recently rappelled down some stairs and been spelunking in an unknown cavern. Hey, she's an archaeologist, Josh. An archaeologist. If she's an archaeologist, okay. where's her fedora? Shit, he's on to something. How did they get those down there? I love this stuff just magically appears. Right? <laughs> no! Fire a gun in a room full of mercury. You have not seen any Indiana Jones. Yeah, see, the guys in ancient <laughs> Egypt, they had no excuse. They didn't know what happens when you mummify people alive. These people were around when the mummy came out in 1999. Yeah, you see a giant rope? You do not shoot it. It is a trap. You shot the rope. Look at the trap. Remember when nice. I said the movie really goes off the rails when the plot kicks in? Yeah. The plot's kicking in. Because we got the C-130 and the only uh, cargo is a... Uh... 5,000-year-old sarcophagus with all these weird crows flying around, a random sandstorm that came out of nowhere. We're going to be fine. We're going to be fine. <laughs> Everything's fine. Two. They clearly haven't seen Flight of the Phoenix. I was going to say that. <laughs> yeah, no, somebody needs to secure that thing. It's just wobbling around everywhere. That You're pissing it off. Yeah, put some underwear on that thing. I don't like seeing it wobble. Yeah, wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> he just Jackie Chan that guy's gun. But you have to report that. It was your gun that killed a man. Oh, yeah, and you let me take it from you. Yeah, you have to report that too. That was not the time for fear. No, I understood that reference. <laughs> okay, so maybe he's not a better pilot than Jimmy Stewart. Is anyone really better than Jimmy Stewart? No. Damn, Tom Cruise. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. If I'm that ripped at 58, I'll be happy. Seriously, though, yeah. Tom Cruise, you're sexy. Don't worry. I've got your number. Stop it. <laughs> How do they get the winch? How do they... The Beal bogies were right there on top of them. They had to get out in seconds. Hey, what did Dan tell you? The plot is kicked in. The plot's kicked in. The movie's now off the rails. Enjoy your stay. So she's just now putting all this shit together? Well, I think he's trying to remind the audience of what's been happening for the past 10 minutes. Oh, so I've... they gotta repeat everything that we just fucking saw. Yeah, because they're gonna do this again when he meets Russell Crowe later. They know the attention span of their audience. Okay. I, I, no, 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 I think they understand what movie they're making. They're like, okay, guys, I've already lost like everything. We need to have another level of exposition because I've already forgotten every single point of this movie. This whole film is one giant piss break. Just came up a little short. Ah! Oof. It wasn't even directed at me and I feel insulted. <laughs>
But I'm taller than Tom Cruise. So I don't care. <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> he has memories of ancient Egypt. Of course he knows where all the highways are in England. Of course I've had a concussion. I fell out of a goddamn plane. Are you a doctor or something? Archaeologist. It's the same thing. No, it's not. Indiana Jones was Dr. Jones. You weren't going to have him do brain surgery, though. Well, you could have. He was a doctor. Not of the brains. Tom, I think I know what a doctor is, okay? No, you don't. Yeah, like you go to a brain doctor when you're feeling sad, right? That's a psychologist. No, no. Tom Cruise is a Scientologist. He doesn't go to psychologists. I need another drink. I specialize in infectious disease. 2020 would like a word. I like how they put the sacred dagger that she wants so badly in the same room as her. And they have the cameras showing where the location of the uh, diamond is yeah. facing her. Infosec at its purest. Mwah. Gotta go find a number on a wall. Ah, damn it, Josh. I haven't seen this movie in almost four years. Is it possible that I don't hate it as much as I remember? Because I'm not hating it right now. I'm not liking it. I think the beer is helping this movie. Keep it coming. Okay, this always got me whenever they give you the opportunity to be the vessel for a living god. My body, my flesh sack will be the vessel. I am no longer going to exist. They're wiping the hard drive. Basically, yeah. It's like, you will be set. It's like, I'm not going to have any of this shit. Yeah. How about the god give me his powers and I'll just, you know... Take suggestions on what to do. I'm still in control. Let's um, let's Linux this thing. Yeah, basically, they just want him to bottom for a god. Take it, bitch. I mean, even in that one, you'd be getting something out of it. This one, they're just wiping the hard drive. Yeah. We are at the point, gentlemen. Tom Cruise. Running in a Tom Cruise film. Because for a good time, call. Stop. <laughs> I'm inside you. <laughs> oh, she's inside him now. Oh, he's outside of her. Oh, I hope the one-liner was worth it. It wasn't. My ribs are in my lung, and I don't know where my lungs are. Only Tom Cruise can get away with fucking Tom Cruise in his own movie. Was it good for you, Tom Cruise? Of course it was, Tom Cruise. Oh Jesus! Are we a zombie movie? Sure, why not? <laughs> I'll be anything I want to do. Monsterverse! <laughs> Wrong one. Darkverse! There you go. <laughs> and just like that, power exchange. Hmm. The sub has become the dom. This is still a better movie than The Last Jedi. And Rise of Skywalker. I'm just saying. Low bars. Eight, six, seven, five, three, oh, nine. Oh, my God. <laughs> and now... Back to the episode. I'm just saying if there's a uh, after credit scene. There is. Hang on. There's probably a Dracula. Yeah, I don't think there is one. Yeah, don't get paid. We've got... we got 15 seconds. What are they going to do? Show a picture of Dracula's dick? Oh, we could be so lucky. I don't know. Luke Evans is kind of sexy. Isn't he, though? No, nothing. Okay. Ooh, okay. So what happened in this movie? Fuck what happened in this movie. So, our movie starts with Nick Morton, oh, that's his name, played by Tom Cruise, as well as Sergeant Val, played by Jake Johnson, not Nick Miller, finding some reason to go into a random village in Iraq where they almost get killed. They uncover, somehow, through explosions and such, a underground tomb. They all went in, they uncovered the tomb, found the sarcophagus of one Hamenet. Now keep in mind, we had a little bit of exposition here, unnecessary exposition, I might add. We did see a glimpse of Russell Crowe walking into a tomb of a bunch of crusaders a few minutes before all this happened. I mean that, a few minutes before this happened, because this movie was just everywhere. Anywho, so they take the sarcophagus from the tomb in Iraq after they say the bogey's inbound, and four hours later they finally leave. <laughs> and then, um, not lying there. No. Then as they're flying, somehow they're over England, and then it crashes. This is after Jake Johnson apparently dies from a spider bite, stabs another dude. Tom Cruise miraculously survives, and they go back to the uh, crash site to find a dagger that doesn't have a ruby. 
and then they run away from the sexy mummy. I say the sexy mummy because she is, in fact, very hot. Not temperature hot, but damn, she's she's a she's a good looking mummy. So they run away from the mummy. They capture the mummy, and then they uh, totally BDSM bondage her up. But they do cut and splice a couple of scenes of Tom Cruise and uh, Russell Crowe, who's apparently uh, Henry Jekyll slash something Hyde. And he forgot his meds and, you know, he went bipolar on us, but it was totally unnecessary to the plot. And then, obviously, uh, the really hot mummy escaped. They're in London, so they go to the sewers where they find the tomb of the crusaders from the beginning of the film where we started with the unnecessary exposition. From there, they find the ruby that was supposed to be in a dagger. Don't ask. And then um, Tom Cruise... I guess uses the dagger on himself, becomes Set, the god of death, kills the mummy, brings back to life a few people, runs off into the sunset to some very pompous music, and it felt like a Marvel movie. Like, hey, Marvel did that, let's do it too. So felt like one was, of the bad Marvel movies. Yeah, one of the bad Marvel movies. But that's basically the movie I didn't miss anything, because um, if I did, that means be forced to remember it again. So, um, Tom, I am anxious to hear your final thoughts on this film. So, uh, why don't you go ahead with that, Thompson? The mic is yours. Squeak. Oh, God. I fucking hate having my time wasted. I hate it so much. This was an hour and a half. Barely. And nothing was accomplished. Nothing was done. It's Nothing of this was but needless exposition. We we were like, we all looked at the timestamps like, oh my god, we only have 20 minutes left in this film. Is there anything they're going to do at all? No, they just talked. There was, what, 20 minutes of film spread out to an hour and a half. What the fuck? What the fuck? Oh, Hang on, I need another minute and another drink. <laughs> Guys. I think the moral of the story of this is uh, I like Tom's final thoughts more when he's had a few. <laughs> <laughs> These would be my thoughts if I was not. Oh my god! Yes, but you emote more when you've had a few. No, I emote like this when I. You just don't see it because I turn. I, you don't see me because normally we're in the same room. No, my god! Kurtzman is a hack. Kurtzman is the worst thing to happen. Who he's hiring this moron? He had his fingerprints all over this goddamn film. We blame the studio? No, I guarantee this was all Kurtzman. You see this in all the new Trek. You see this in everything he does. He does not know how to make a good story. He just knows action scenes. That's all he knows. <laughs> just, I'm going to splice in 20 minutes of me just... Right there. That's all I have to say. There's nothing else wor worth saying to this film. I, I liked um, Jake Johnson. There we go. That's the one good thing. But then again, Jake Johnson is the best thing about most things he's in. He's just fun. And the interplay between him and Tom Cruise was fun. But that's just Jake Johnson bringing like everything. He's good at improv and he's good at playing off and just being Jake Johnson. He's Nick Miller from New Girl and everything he's in. Except for... um. Drinking Buddies, that's a great film. But if we ever see that film, I hope so. Josh, do I want to give it to you, Josh? Yes, I want to give it to you, Josh. Josh, take the wheel because I'm just going to drive this off the non-existent clip that was this film. Fuck this film! Stop okay, uh, I just need to preface our listeners. Um, Tom's house apparently burned down. I'm exaggerating, but there was a fire in his complex. So he's at my place. We are in the same room. I'm totally leaving Nigel out of the equation, just over there. I don't get invited. <laughs> and um, so I'm sitting here seeing Tom physically cry after watching this movie. And I have to say, I agree with the sentiment. My expectations were met watching this movie. Now keep in mind, I set the bar very low. So it does trick you up until, again, Nigel, you called it, the plot kicks in. Plot. Yeah, <laughs> air quotes plot. The point in the movie where they tried to have a plot. Now, I think the 99 movie was a lot better in terms of doing the exposition because the movie started out with it. So it was at least chronological, if you want to call it that. But uh, no, it was bad. I'm just not even going to cherry coat this. This was a bad movie. 
Jake Johnson was fantastic. I thought Tom Cruise, as always, did a great job in it. I don't think he deserved the Golden Razzie for this. Now, granted, this wasn't his best performance, but I also think you, when you're you sat down to start sculpting with shit, no matter what you come, it's going to be a turd. But no, this movie was not good. I will admit that Sophia Botella. Yeah. Dude, I will watch her paint a wall, and I will watch her watch paint dry. I don't know. I, I, everything I've ever seen her in, I have been impressed with. Her performance, I should say. She's one of those good, um, like, what's the term? Is a body actor? Emotive. Yeah, like in Kingsman. You recognize her character because her body language in the film. Same thing with Star Trek Beyond. She does a fantastic job of playing the character in the body language as she does as anything else. I think she does a great job. Like I said, I could watch her watch paint dry. Because I just, I like her as an actress that much. It's one of those things. I thought everybody, with the exception of Russell Crowe, did a good job in this film. Russell Crowe just literally felt like he phoned it in. Oh, he absolutely did, yes. He's all like, how much do you want to pay me? Okay, I can go ahead and do that for this. But uh, it's definitely not the actor's fault, minus Russell Crowe. It's definitely the writer's and the director's fault that this movie was trash. I would almost give the, the studio a pass for this film. Just because it... <laughs> Oh my god, it was just, it wasn't good. It wasn't good. I almost said this was beige, like you said with, uh, like Tom said it was with Swing Boat, but no, this movie was not good. So, uh, Nigel, I want to hear you rant. <laughs> I want to hear you uh, just eviscerate this movie. So I'm going to hand the, the baton to you, please. Well, I'm going to start off by paraphrasing Captain Kirk in Star Trek II, The Wrath of Khan, when he said to Khan, like a pool of marks, you keep missing the target. And that is this movie. That is Universal's dark universe in a nutshell. In a pool of marks, they keep missing the target. Again, nobody wanted this dark universe. No one cared. I I said this in my initial expectations. Nobody wanted this. Nobody gave a shit if Dracula and Frankenstein shared the same screen. Yeah, we want to see Captain America and Iron Man on the same screen. We want to see Batman and Superman on the same screen. We don't. We even want to see Godzilla fight King Kong on the same screen. We don't want to see Dracula and Frankenstein on the same screen. Nobody wants that. And this movie was so much of nothing. Like, I think Tom said it while we were watching the movie. We still have a half an hour left and nothing's happened. And that's exactly what this movie is. You're an hour into the movie and nothing has happened yet. The only part of the movie that was even remotely good was the opening scene in Iraq with Tom Cruise and his buddy. That was it. When he goes, I think we're going to die here. That was the only good part. The rest of it was this. 10-minute exposition scene here, 10-minute exposition scene here, 10-minute exposition scene here. And then by the time you're at the hour mark, you realize nothing's really happened, and all it is is characters explaining the universe to you. Mm. And it's so boring to watch. I don't want to have the universe explained to me. Show me your universe. Build it that way. Like Star Wars, Star Trek, you know, Star Trek builds up its universe without exposition. Well, except for the current season of Discovery, but I wonder who's behind that. Oh, Kurtzman. <laughs> and, and that's just my thought about this movie, is that other than my initial rant of nobody cares about the Universal Dark Universe, it's that the reason why nobody cares about it is because you haven't built the universe up properly. You just, you dump on us with exposition, especially when most of the exposition comes from a Russell Crowe who's just, I love Russell Crowe, but he is phoning it in here. He is mm-hmm. definitely in this movie to collect a paycheck. And maybe to be in a movie and say that, yeah, well, me and Tom Cruise worked on a picture together. Tom Cruise, to his credit, in this movie is really trying. He's really trying. I, I, from what I read, he was all on board with this. He really wanted to be part of this collected universe. It looks like he's kind of regretting it, the fact he never got cast as Tony Stark. You know, he really wanted to be part of this big universe, and he was so looking forward to this. And, man, he advertised the shit out of this movie when it was time to go on tour for it. Oh, he did the talk show circuit. He was doing all the press for it, really trying to get this movie on. And so, to his credit, in this movie, he's really trying. And he's not great in this movie, but he's he's Tom Cruise. He's you know. a professional. Yeah. Yeah, and he's doing – He's. I think he was doing really good. And I thought the – um, what's the actor's name, Tom, that played his buddy? Jake Josh, Johnson. Jay, Jake Johnson. Him and Jake Johnson actually played off each other really well. So a lot better than the love interest in the movie, especially early in the film. That's why I was kind of oh, yeah. bummed out that they killed Jake Johnson so early. Like, I wouldn't mind if they may have, maybe have killed him later in the movie to kind of up the stakes a little bit. Yeah. Like, do you um, mind, pause uh, real quick, Nigel? Uh, do you think 
they added more scenes with Jake Johnson's character because they played so well off each other? Well, they did bring him back from the dead at the very end. It's like they noticed yeah, they... the chemistry was really well. So I'm willing to bet that they brought him back because they're like, shit. Yeah. The best thing about this movie was that relationship. Yeah, so I actually was was thinking that too, Tom, that did play off each other so well and that whole like catchphrase that Tom had at the beginning of the movie where he said, like, you know, where's your sense of adventure? And the fact that they brought him back at the very end of the movie definitely tells me that they wanted to use him in sequels to have those two um, continue to be the, you know, Abbott and Costello of the sequels. And <laughs> like I said, that's fine. They actually had good chemistry. And if they'd made sequels to this movie or, or more movies in the universe... I would have liked to have seen more of that because that was the only thing good about this movie. And, and well, um, I don't want to be the guy to shit on your parade there, Dan, but uh, the 2020 movie, The Invisible Man, is technically in the dark universe. So we're, I told you guys earlier tonight, they're not done with this thing. Like Universal is clinging on to it like... Oh, they are. They are. Like, like there's uh, apparently movies still in production to be in the dark universe. But like, that... I, I, Go ahead, Nigel. I was just saying, it, it's, it's just one of those things. It's like, I, 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 I'm, I'm going to keep repeating myself. It's just nobody wanted this. It's the only one of these connected universes that doesn't make any fucking sense. It just doesn't. Like, I, I, I think they had Mummy or Mummy and uh, versus Frankenstein or versus Dracula movies in the 50s or the 40s. Yeah. But that there was a different time back then. Well, and that, To add to your thoughts, Nigel, I think another reason that this didn't work compared to some of those others there were no stakes there wasn't like uh the the world wasn't like at risk like she was just coming back to bring set the god set back into this world yeah well that but was this... the stakes i guess apparently if set comes into the world that he could plunge the world into darkness or something it's in one of those 10 minute exposition scenes with russell crowe yeah but there was no with like a narrator number four, yeah. Yeah, but there was no like impression of what that meant. Someone just telling us that could happen. Yeah, yeah. To be completely honest, if I was to do this, like if I'm handcuffed to this, and they're they're wanting me to write something to connect this dark universe, I would say, you know what? I know that that wasn't the start you wanted, but I need to bring back Dracula from Dracula Untold because they did do a reshoot in that movie where they showed him in the modern time. To show that he's still alive and well, because he's Dracula. I honestly would have had Dracula instead of Russell Crowe's character do the exposition. Because then you can still have the audience say, oh, it's Dracula from that one movie that bombed. <laughs> you know, but, <laughs> but still, it would make your audience go back maybe and watch that movie again. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, I mean, loose you know, connections are better than nothing. I mean, yeah, shit, because- look at the connections between... Back to the Marvel connections, you know, between Iron Man and uh, Incredible Hulk. There was no indication that those two movies was connected until Tony Stark showed up at the end of it. And you're like, oh my God, they're connected. They're right. actually doing this. Right. And then the, like, I think, what did he call, what's the name of the, the, the big organization, the, the Prodigium, Prodigium or whatever it was called? Exactly. Prodigy, Prodigium, or I don't remember. I don't care. But when he like has that big moment where like he, they go into that sweeping room and he turns around, and he looks at Tom Cruise, he goes, welcome to Prodigium. And you're like, to what? I, it has no context because I don't know what this is. Like, I know that that's that was supposed to be your big Avengers moment or, you know, welcome to S.H.I.E.L.D. to make the fans go squee, but I don't know what this is. It's like, Universal that's the Marvel. exposition we wanted. Yeah. No, no, let me rephrase. That's the exposition that we probably should have had from the start. Yeah, or you do something like you don't have the secret headquarters in London because London's not the center of your dark universe, unless you were committed to starting it with the Wolfman, but they abandoned the Wolfman as the start of the dark universe and went with Dracula untold. So honestly, the, the secret organization shouldn't have been housed in London. It should have been housed somewhere like Romania. Cause then you're like, Oh, Romania is near Transylvania. Again, that's showing your universe and building it up that way. Instead of just telling us things. Well, we keep I think coming back to the root of the problem, which is the writing. Yeah, the writing the is... Well, I think you said, Tom, in the beginning of the podcast where you're like, any movie that's got five writers is always really good. <laughs> like, yeah. And, and yeah, you're right. This is definitely a case of too many cooks. And, and no one supervising them. It's, they just let them bullshit all over. And none of them. The, the director didn't know what he was doing. The writers didn't know what they were doing. And co- there were competent moments. Not even competent moments. I take that back. There were moments that in competent hands. 
could have worked. Like where they were in the um, uh, underwater and like everything was popping out of the sarcophagi and they were mm-hmm. coming at them like incompetent hands. That would have been pretty yeah. good. And as cliched as it is, maybe instead of using Russell Crowe as Dr. Jekyll, mm-hmm. maybe you have somebody else playing Descendant or someone of Van Helsing. Because Van Helsing is like a name that's tied to Dracula and it's usually tied to monster hunting. There's so many other things they could have done, but they went with, the, like, they just went with the option. <laughs> it's like, they had a multiple choice tw- test and they kept going with the worst possible answer on every single question. You know? A, B, B, A, C, A, B, C, C, A. Yeah, because like, oh, I cracked the code because I'm using the same code as Marvel. No, you're not. You're not copying off Marvel. You're not. This is an essay quiz. Yeah. yeah dude. I'm going to keep repeating myself, but yeah, this yeah, movie is we're just getting to that point. Yeah. I think the more we repeat ourselves, the more we hate the film. Yeah, because there's nothing else to say but this I, if we it didn't have been corned up if they went cheesy with it if they leaned into it maybe yeah. there could have been something that's the thing this movie didn't know what it wanted to be it's like are we a zombie movie are we a horror film okay no we're a comedy now no wait what are we mm-hmm. zombie film that's right yeah. <laughs> yeah they didn't care they didn't care to really go all out with it they just like they like zombies right let's do a zombie they, water water Hot chicken chains, hot chicken mm. chains. We need, how, how are we going to get rid of the zombies now? Poof them to dust? Wow. Yeah. And I don't know. It's just for all the um, buildup they could have done. I don't. We, we, I think we mentioned while we were watching it that we saw the movie that it was trying to be, that, yeah. it was, that it had the potential to be. And that is always the most disappointing types of movies, is where you see maybe not the good film, but at least the decent, fun film that's trying to break out of it. You know, you can see where they wanted to go. I think we said the same thing about Batman v Superman. Like, we see the film that it wanted to be, but it's just the films. Not a, yeah. And this well, this one's kind of like that. Like, kind of like Batman v Superman, where it's probably two or three movies or two or three stories mashed into one. And, and when you do that, none of them make sense. Story by committee. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I mean, just imagine how bad like The Empire Strikes Back would have been if they'd have tried to mash in Return of the Jedi into it. Instead of letting those two movies be their own movie, I don't know. Well, this, yeah, we, we saw that with um, Last Jedi. Yep. Now they they had no idea what they were doing with the the rise of Skywalker. Dumbest name ever. Fight me. Um, yeah, they had no idea what they were doing after that. They, they yeah. Oh, and c- yeah, come at me, Star Wars fans. Your movies were shit. Okay. I don't care. I don't care. Shout out to Rob. But <laughs> Rob's a huge Star Wars fan. Dude, but, I'm a huge Star Wars fan, and I can't stand the sequel trilogy. The Force Awakens is passable, but then it came up with two shit sequels. But we're digressing. Yes, yeah. yes. This is the uh, Last Jedi, or excuse so, me, the Rise of Skywalker. But like for the first so, film, so not this, the last film. So they really are making another one. Like this Invisible Moon or Invisible Man movie is going to be. In the dark According universe. According to Wikipedia, it says that it's part of the dark universe. They have a Bride of Frankenstein coming out, and apparently an untitled Invisible Man sequel, in addition to a Van Helsing movie. God. So Why they are clinging this? to the life on this. So thing. Are, are these reboots? Are they rebooting it again, or are they going to be in the same universe as this Mummy movie? Supposedly, like apparently, the I'm just reading the Wikipedia. We've got the Invisible Man, which came out February 2020. Dark Army, directed by your favorite director, Paul Fagg. No so, God. He's worse yeah. than Kurtzman. And then something called Reinfeld, a Frankenstein, Invisible Woman, Monster Mash. If they ham it up, I could see this being a success. Um, oh, Bride of Frankenstein, Dracula, Wolfman, Little Monsters, Invisible Man sequel, untitled film. I'm looking forward to that one, I'll be honest. And then a Van Helsing reboot. Untitled film has Channing by James Wan, Aquaman director himself. Uh, oh, <laughs> nothing good can come of any of this. There's so much curse. Hey, look at it this way: Elizabeth Banks is directing The Invisible Woman. Oh no! Oh, no. Tom literally direct- just died. Yeah, she directed the new Charlie's Angels and went ahead and, you know, right during the marketing said, I didn't make this movie for men. Don't go see it. And they didn't. And it showed in the box office numbers. Because neither you know. did women. Yeah, no, yeah, neither did women either. Like, like, you didn't make this movie for anybody, apparently, because that's who saw it. 
Oh, yeah. Oh, God. But I, that's that. I'm not going to get political with that. I'm just saying that. The, the, oh my God, this whole dark universe thing is is a I disaster. They put it to bed after this film came out. Truthfully, the, I, I mean that which sleeps may never lie. And then strange aeons. Yeah, what, what is the quote that they had at the beginning of this movie? Something about death, like, it, it's only uh, temporary. Yeah. <laughs> they killed it after this, but then, by God, they brought it back from the dead. It's like, it's like they overheard somebody say, man, DC's really fucking up this connected universe thing. They could really compete with Marvel if they just tightened up their shit, but... I don't know. I don't think anyone can do a worse job than DC and Universal said, hold my beer. You think Batman v Superman was bad? You think Suicide Squad was shit? Ha! Academy ha. Award winning Suicide Squad. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, you think, yeah, yeah, but you this think... one's got Razzies, buddy. All of the Razzies. Suicide Squad at least, well, okay, yeah, I was going to say Suicide Squad at least had Will Smith and he's a presence on screen, but this movie had Tom Cruise and he's a presence on screen. As small as he is. <laughs> But okay. I think we need to put a stake in this vampire because it's just going to suck us dry. Yeah. So let's end on a question. Would you recommend this even to your worst enemy? Yeah, this isn't one of those movies that I can even recommend when you just say, like, you just turn your brain off and munch on some popcorn. You might enjoy this film. No, no. Even if you zone out. This movie is not enjoyable because then if you zone out, you miss all the exposition. So you miss what little bit of story this movie has. Um. No, I couldn't recommend this film. This isn't like Aquaman, where even Aquaman with all the that zoomy camera thing that I can't unsee now when I rewatch that movie. Yeah, thank you for that, Tom. At least have, but at least have Jed, Jason Momoa being awesome, you know. Um, I, yeah, I would say that if it came down to me, I would definitely say the phrase, "Yes, you should definitely watch the Mummy." But then I would have to follow that up with, "Not the 2017 remake." Yeah, watch the Brendan Fraser version. Yeah. I know it's, but, they're um, completely different films, but that's a much better movie. Like, if somebody was dead set on watching this one, I would definitely argue against watching it, but I would say at least two and a half sentences on the merits of this film. That being, what's his face, Jake Johnson and Sophia Butella. Yeah, and I would say, yeah, and Tom Cruise is in it. There we go. Actually. Yeah, I guess, I guess. Well, okay, yeah, I would well, recommend actually, it. Tom, would you recommend it? Oh, no. No, God, no. Please don't. Just don't. Just fucking yeah. don't. It's like yeah. not even enjoyably bad. Just go watch the Brendan Fraser version. It's a lot more fun. Or go um, watch Monster Squad. If yeah. You, your, you know, Dark Universe, there you go. Yeah. Uh, so I, I definitely think we're repeating ourselves, and I think Josh was right. The more we talk about it, the more pissed off we're getting. So I think I think that does it for tonight's show. Um as a reminder, you can find us on Spotify, iTunes, Amazon, wherever you get your podcasts. Be sure to like and subscribe. Leave us some feedback. Uh, it really helps the podcast out. And uh, be sure to join us on Discord and have some air quotes fun interacting with us. We like to talk to our fans on Discord. And you love to talk to us. That's why it's so conversational. But uh, you can always suggest movies to watch, talk about how our opinions are right or wrong. But if you like this movie... I would not <laughs> recommend arguing that fact in Discord, but we do want to talk to you. We're also on Facebook and follow us on Twitter, so why don't you hit us up there? But if you want to reach out to us old school style, you can email us, as mentioned back in the interspersal. Uh, if you want to talk sponsorship or any other feedback or submissions or what have you, the links to the email and all our social media in the episode's descriptions at firepit dot podbean dot com and uh, i'd like to give a special shout out as always to peggy friend of the channel um she's re-listening again to all the episodes in order and she's just enjoying the growth of the channel she's been leaving me some really good feedback so thanks as always josh you got any shout outs yes i would like to give a special shout out to my good friend Tarek thorne from our discord channel he said listening to our latest episode tonight that was the Days of Thunder episode. And really enjoying the energy you guys are bringing. You can tell that having a fun popcorn kind of film gave you guys another level of enthusiasm. And to that, I want to say I apologize for tonight's video. <laughs> tonight's episode. So um, I hope you enjoy the episode, but I can almost guarantee you our enthusiasm is not what it was last week. But, Tarek Thorne, special shout out to you. So thank you again for listening. We appreciate it. I would disagree, Josh. We've been pretty enthusiastic about this film, just in the negative way. Yeah, oh, we had fun boy, shitting boy, all over boy, it, boy, so boy. yeah. Um, from my end, just uh, 
special shout out to my parents and uh, a few members of my family who have been listening in. They decided, why the heck not? We actually have a few new Facebook members who join. Patsy and Sydney recently popped into our Facebook. So I want to thank them for joining. We also have Mick also following Facebook right now. We have a lot of people popping in on Facebook. So if I haven't got to your name yet, rest assured, we will get to you eventually. There's just many people to get through. I think we have something like couple hundred now so no joke yeah well, hey thank you for listening yeah thanks and for... if you haven't listened you're probably not going to hear the shout out so thank yeah. you but <laughs> listen to the podcast join the discord we're all over yes. the place keep those fire pit fires burning yeah awesome awesome well good time tonight i mean relatively speaking but i think that does it for tonight's episode of fun so tom where are we going next week well back to josh's favorite setting as we take mr hyde himself Russell Crowe, to 1995's The Quick and the Dead. Watch out, cowboys! Oh, God. Which is also... <laughs> which is also... Story- <laughs> he loves those cowboy films. Westerns are his favorite, if you've listened to the past couple episodes. And also Gene Hackman and Sharon Stone, who are also in this film. And they're fantastic. It's more modern western, so maybe Josh won't complain so much. Maybe. You know, maybe Dad won't complain so much. I hate you, but I love you. But it should be a fun episode, you know, but I hate you. So, anywho, <laughs> stick around and keep flying high on a hero's journey with us as we continue on to Superman. Until then, I've been Dan. And I've been Josh. And I've been Tom. Thanks for listening. This has been a production of Curtain Call Entertainment, LLC. Stay safe out there. So, Tom, where did you get that amulet anyway? Well, you know that building you threw me off of? But, like, in the building? Well, yeah, I kind of crashed into the window a bit. Oh, you crashed into the gift shop! No, I didn't. There was a whole bunch of artifacts in there. See? It's legitimate. It was definitely the gift shop. Yeah, it was the gift shop. How much did you pay for it? I didn't pay for it. I found it. See, I, it, it's an ancient Chinese artifact. See? Let me see it. <laughs> made in China. It's got a sticker on the bottom. It's made of plastic. So what made you think this could possibly work? I mean, it was made in China. They made the Mummy movie in China. The third yeah. one? That's not the one anyone remembers. That was <laughs> the one where Jet Li swore off making American movies. Until Disney came in and decided to pay him. Disney has a way of resurrecting dead things like mummies. <laughs> and see, that's why the plan was going to work. Actually, now that you say it out loud, this was a dumb plan. Yeah, <laughs> let's just focus on getting this uh, the Professor Metzger on the show, and hopefully this actually doesn't literally blow up in our faces. What's the worst that can happen, guys? Psst, you're off. Uh, what is the worst that can happen? Does our trio have what it takes to talk to Professor Metzger? What of the gift shop? How much in damages did it all cost? And will Josh stop feeling dizzy? Find out next week. Same fire pit time. Same fire pit channel. <laughs> <laughs>